And but I'm excited, man. Like, I got this big old 8,000 coming in here, yes, DVF 8,000. We're actually journeying into a big aerospace round as far as like parts and parts and parts, and actually just like making a lot of different tutorials for our Aerospace Academy. And thus, we're gonna be making some big parts, man. And yeah. we need a big spindle. Sure. This bad boy has the HSK. 100 on it yeah super Sweet. excited it's an impressive machine for sure definitely yeah. has some upgrades uh oh, versus yeah. the previous machine yeah. yeah this dn solutions dvf 8000 with turning has the siemens control oh, yeah. and, I'm, and i'm so excited oh, so yeah. smooth Oops. The, the best controller on the market yeah. as far as i'm concerned the five axis king it's, it's a noticeable difference when you go to the heller and you run that siemens super good it is absolutely hands down my favorite control i've ever used yeah and so you'll have to educate me a little bit barry i mean or, or jesse i mean i've never used a siemens control so what are I mean, what is the benefit what, what do i get when i move to a siemens control there are literally a ton of benefits and i say all the time some of the other controls are like atari's this is like an xbox and it's more like a modern computer i mean i talked in a few videos before about how just getting a program onto the machine it's copy paste done yeah. i mean it's more like what you're used to seeing in the 21st century you know, right yeah and with it's, all the young people getting into the trade now you yeah. want something that at least resembles yeah. a modern yeah. computer relatable of, to the technology right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. experienced yeah. you don't have to know this foreign language that doesn't make sense to you yep. you know it's it's more like what you want to see. For sure. When you get into five axis and the type of tool paths that you're dealing with on a five axis, I just I just don't want to run anything else except Siemens. So when you, right right when you walk in the shop, you see the LPS, mm -hmm. right? And then basically all the pallet systems is just like a wall. And then boom, then you hit this machine and it's a nice sharp corner and like straight down. I mean, machine placement is super important. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, a lot of a lot of people think that you're just taking machines and putting it into a shop and just and and that's why I go into some of these big companies and their shops are a mess and like it's like huge companies. But what happens is they actually start buying machines from a long time ago. They're not replacing them, and then they just keep adding as needed. Yep. And yep. and the same parts are running you know, that used to run decades ago. And basically they just keep building and building and building without actually stopping and saying, hey, let's regroup. Mm -hmm. For sure. Let's look at process. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the roadmap of how parts go through our shop and actually uh, changing it out. For sure. I think, uh, you know, I'm thinking about that and it's intentional, right? You have to have intentionality when you're laying out your shop. And so back yeah. in the day when we had our shop, we were intentional yeah. about where the material came in, where the machining happened, where the inspection happened, where final shipping happened, yeah. right? All that matters in here. It's just the same, right? We take people on this experience of the shop and we are intentional about where we want to take them exactly. and how we want to do it. When we were in uh, California and we had our shop management system, I strategically when you walked out of the office area you came into the shop right when you walked out I had we had a desk right there we had the computer we had the, the scanner so that you can actually have like you know the shop management the routers the barcodes so you could be like scanning everything yep. boom 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 right through for sure and it was all strategic it was like as soon as you walk a customer through right there I could just explain the entire process what the router was how it went through the shop and it was genius because the moment they walked in the shop they knew these guys are legit yeah, yeah and you got to think too you know as you lay out a shop you you want your shop floor to kind of reflect the process right so you Absolutely. have material coming in the door then naturally it's going to probably go through the saw so you have your saw there and then you have your mills your lathes your inspection i think a big part of shop improvement is being able to collect that data too sometimes you may not get it right the first time and i think yep. it's important to to be open to change and to be able to collect that data see what the results are and be able to change if you have to and can you know continuously improve yeah, that's yeah, the game absolutely. continuous improvement so keith usually sitting at this table but right now he's he's like looking at a computer and he's just like ah, ah because we're a machine distributor now and it's an incredible thing and that's how we're going to actually fund free education and just take everything to the highest level and we came out and we talked about it. We've been putting videos out and uh, we have so many people uh, right now wanting quotes and uh, purchasing machines and it's incredible.
It's a, it's it's an incredible thing. It's another level to the game. Super good, man.